Elliott should do with the Cowboys' latest offer. Plus, should the Lakers be upset with our experts, ranking them fourth among title contenders? And the college football season is here. Paul Feinbaum will tell us if we're headed for another Clemson-Bama showdown. First take right now. Welcome back. Welcome back to First Take. We are coming to you live from above the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. Ed Werder, ESPN's Ed Werder, reported Thursday that the Dallas Cowboys' latest offer to Ezekiel Elliott would make him one of the two highest paid running backs in the NFL, falling somewhere between Le'Veon Bell's $13.5 million per year in the Jets and Todd Gurley's $14.375 million per year with the Rams. And right now we want to make sure to welcome in ESPN NFL front office insider Lewis Riddick, who is joining us as well. What's up, man? What's up, Lewis? You hey, all right? I'm, 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 you all right? Hey, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm feeling pretty good. I, 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 all right. I, I like this subject. You know. I mean, I mean, we 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 could talk about the subject, but I will caution you. This is about what's going on in Texas, not down there in Napa Valley, the wine country <laughs> of the world. We've you know already what I'm settled I just, that. Though. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure you are. All right. we you already, ready to go? We already settled that. All right. okay. We know All what's right. happening. Okay. Lewis, we know, know you too, like. Max. Okay. We know you oh, like the Raiders. Oh wait, you got something for me? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know it's already, you know it's already settled too. Y'all gonna Ooh. see. Y'all gonna recognize Raider Nation. I'm just telling. Raider, Raider. All right, well, we'll, we'll get Raider to your Raiders Nation. taste. Let's start. With, let's start <laughs> with the Cowboys though. Yeah. Stephen A. Yeah. Should Zeke take this deal offer immediately? No, I'm not gonna say he should take it immediately. I'm gonna say he should wait. I'm gonna say he should wait. Play the game. That's what I'm gonna say. You know, listen. The fact of the matter is, is that Ezekiel Elliott right now is arguably the best running back in football. Clearly one of the top two or three. Um, he believes he deserves to be paid accordingly. My issue wasn't with his money. Uh, it was his willingness to demand it at this particular moment in time, you know, pressing Jerry Jones against the wall in the midst of a negotiation with Dak Prescott after you have conducted yourself the way that you have conducted yourself. Rookie year, 322 carries, rushed for over 1,000 yards, obviously. Last year, 304 carries, rushed for over 1,400 yards. His second year in the league when he got suspended for 10 games, six games, I'm sorry, six games, I'm sorry, he rushed for about 200, he had about 242 carries. He was on par to rush for nearly 1,500 yards, all right, if he hadn't missed those six games. So Ezekiel Elliott is a stud. This is not an issue about his skill set um, or an issue about him deserving the money. I'm just saying Jerry Jones is perfectly within his right to take his leisurely old time in deciding when to give it to him. Now that you've got him talking with you and negotiating with you and saying, hey, top two running back in football. If I'm Ezekiel Elliott, I'm like this. Well, you know, I can wait a few weeks to be number one. I don't even think that's the issue. I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I even wait a few weeks to be number issue, one. Stephen a. Guaranteed dollars, of course. I, uh, right. Here's, Here's the thing. Right, right. This is how it works. I want to tell everybody how the business oh, works. Oh, Lord. Right. Uh, even though Lewis Riddick is now, on there. Now, on yeah, the yeah, I'm going to tell I'm everybody. Me, okay. This is the okay. media okay. business. Okay. Okay. Lewis okay. can tell us about the okay. football business. Okay. Media business like this. Ed Werder, who's an experienced reporter, gets good at getting information. Welcome back, Ed Werder, by the way. Welcome back. He's good at getting information. But when you have ongoing relationships with people around, you know, okay, what can I report? Well, you can say, honestly, that we've made, we're offering to make them the, high, the second highest paid, see, because the issue is we're not really, we don't want to set the market. Remember what Jerry said? But Edwarder knows that means nothing. That's what he can report now, and that's what we'll run with now to hook you guys and make you interested. But the fact of the matter is that's meaningless. The only thing that matters is the guaranteed dollars, and there's been no reporting on that. So what are the guaranteed dollars, actually? We don't know. Todd Gurley got $45 million. Le'Veon Bell got $35 million. That's a huge gap, $10 million. Is Ezekiel Elliott being offered the second most guaranteed dollars at the position? In that case, I'll say, Zeke, take it. Because even if you think you're better than Todd Gurley, and when healthy, you're not. Todd Gurley's a little bit better than Ezekiel Elliott. Saquon's better than both of them already. But the point is, even if you think you are better than Todd Gurley, you're two years out. They can slap franchise tags on you and all that. And you play a brutal position, you get a million touches, the whole thing. So if they're willing to make you the second highest guaranteed dollar running back right now, I say take it. But I doubt that's what's being offered. That's why this BS offer is being floated to frame Zeke as he's crazy if he doesn't take the second most dollars. It doesn't, you know, the owner doesn't want to reset the market. That's all a, a re, that, that's all a, uh, in, in, in screenwriting, that's called a MacGuffin. You chase this fake thing around to distract you from the real thing that's going on. This is nonsense. This is not really what it's about. How many guaranteed dollars are they offering Zeke? It's going to have to be in the neighborhood of Todd Gurley, period. Look, if I'm Ezekiel Elliott, I'm not doing a thing. I'm sitting still, I'm keeping my mouth shut, and I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm waiting. 
I'm waiting. I'm, I'm with you, Stephen A., on this one. I'm waiting. Because right now, there's, there's nothing. Look, since he came into the league, averaging over 100 yards rushing per game, since 2016, he, look, he has almost 600, 700 yard, uh, yards more rushing than Todd Gurley. Since 2016, 16, 17, 18, he's healthy. Everyone knows that this offense flows through him. Everyone knows that he's the heartbeat of this football team. If I'm Ezekiel Elliott right now, I have really, at this point, if as long as I have taken care of my financial matters to the point where financially, in real world terms, I can sit and wait, I'm sitting and waiting. I'm waiting to see just, okay, Jerry, you sitting here and you're, you're going to tell me right now that you've earned the right to joke around, that you're going to kind of slow play me right now. Maybe the deals aren't coming in very well. You don't need a franchise-type running back in order to win Super Bowls. Fine. Let's just see how much you really do believe in that. Let's see how convicted you are in that. Let's just go ahead and take it into week one if you want to take it into week one. Let's see if Tony Pollard can carry the load that I've carried since I've been on this football team. Let's see if Tony Pollard can have the same effect on Dak Prescott that I have on Dak Prescott. Let's see if he can have the same effect on this offensive line, the defense, and every other team and every other facet of this organization that I have. I'm going to sit and wait because there's no way if I'm him, I am taking less in terms of real guaranteed dollars, average per year dollars. I'm not taking a dime less than Todd Gurley if I'm him. There's no way, shape, or form. And now, Ezekiel going to sit out the entire year? No. You know why? Because his contract's going to toll and he's going to be making the same amount of money in 2020 as he would be scheduled to make in 2019. He still would have the fifth-year option then in 2021. So really, he's not gaining anything if he missed the whole year. So he's not going to do that. Because he's going to want to eventually, you know, he's going to eventually want to get this resolved. But as of right now, if he has the financial wherewithal and has planned in order to go ahead and take this to the max, which at this point I don't understand why he wouldn't, that's what exactly what I would do. I would well, sit and wait and just see, look, if you really do believe, as the league believes, that guys like myself are replaceable as long as you get an acceptable percentage of production from the replacement player that I would give you, then let's just see how much you really believe in that. And I'm not taking a dime less. The only thing, I tell you, Lewis, and, and I'm interested in getting your take on this. The only thing that I have a problem with from time to time, guys sitting out in camp, whatever, not that Zeke needs to be there, he's a running back, you know, he knows the system, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? I've often wondered, why can't you show up to camp and just refuse to work? You know, you work out, take care of yourself, use the facilities to your advantage, maintain peak condition, be around the fellas, have that camaraderie, that chemistry, but while simultaneously letting ownership know, yo, man, I'm going to get out on that field when it's time. Uh, excuse me, I'm not going to jeopardize my future financially. I am here, but take care of me because I deserve this. I often wonder why guys have to sit out and stay home while they're still getting paid or, you know, or risk getting fined or whatever the case may be, Lewis. I've often wondered about that. What's your response to that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and you know what? I, I think right now with this, you know, when you're talking about trying to really utilize what leverage that you have and withholding your services, withholding your services means I'm not going to be around. I'm not going to give you any. I'm not going to allow you to benefit in my, on my presence in any way, shape, or form, especially if you've made the decision already that you need to do something drastic in order to get your contract no, re renegotiated and, be, and uh, get paid fair market value as you see it. And sometimes you got to take it all the way to the max. You're not going to go halfway with it. You're not going to have one foot in the door and say, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to go through meetings. I'm going to work out here, but I'm not going to play. I, I don't think, look, in this case, especially after, uh, concerning what Zeke is after, I don't think that's the tactic I would take either. Lewis. I think right here, right now, I really would play a high-stakes game of let's see who's going to blink first. Let's see Lewis. who can take the pain the most because I think this is important. This is important, especially at this position in particular. Zeke knows what his, you know, his long-term future looks like considering the position that he plays. and He knows that every, every carry, every hit that he takes, it could all go away very, very quickly. Lewis, I, I, I agree with you that Ezekiel Elliott has some real leverage here, and especially if he's willing to, to take it to the, you know, to, the, to the end. However, the reason I say if he's in the ballpark with Gurley, he doesn't need to be number one. Gurley has been banged up and has missed time, but Ezekiel Elliott has also missed time for other reasons. He's like his best ability, availability, he hasn't always been on the field for whatever reason. That's the bottom line. Are you on yeah. the field, yes or no? That's one. Two. Because of his situation, because of how far out he is, because he can't just do what Le'Veon Bell did, sit out the season and then, and then like he's a free agent or anything like that, sure. even though he has real leverage, I mean, the Cowboys have Super Bowl, legitimate Super Bowl hopes, um, they also have some leverage. And so, to me, if they were offering him, I don't know that it's, he needs to reset the running back market because it's not really like you're resetting the labor market just for your position. 
I don't know that that's that important. If he gets within spitting distance of Gurley, who cares who's number one and number two? That's essentially what Gurley got, and it would be a huge guaranteed dollar win for him. Why wouldn't he take that if but, they were offering know, I mean, but see, but see, I can't, I can't, I can't answer for Ezekiel Elliott as to what he really values, Max. And maybe getting close enough isn't good enough for him, regardless of the fact that this is a team that has shown tremendous patience with him and tremendous loyalty to him in terms of where they drafted him, knowing what the risks were with Ezekiel coming out of Ohio State as far as maybe some of the decisions and some of the ways he conducted himself there, some of the ways he's conducted himself since he's been in Dallas, they have still taken the risk. They've still stood behind him. Given all that, and he, he knows that, he knows that this team has shown that they are willing to stand behind him. At the same time, we, he also knows that this is a business. He also knows he plays a position that ca carries a high degree of risk. And right now, there is no incentive for him to take any deal. There just isn't. He's not losing anything. Yeah, obviously, he's incurring fines. But there's no incentive for him to well, move right now. I and there's no, and I really, can, there's no incentive for the Dallas Cowboys to I, I, move well, until they lose games. Lewis, I could throw something out at you based on, you know, your principled position and a lot of different things. Ezekiel Elliott essentially is playing a high-stakes game of poker, as you would articulate, right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself this question. Essentially, aren't you hoping they lose? Because if they lose, it, you know obviously what? they'll desperately need you. And as <laughs> it, a result, I'll get my money. But in other words, you did it at the price of us. I understand that the players many, know business and they understand business. But in a certain respect, particularly when you – once you're the Dallas Cowboys, if it's proven to be correct that he would be the second highest paid running back in all of football and you're still holding out – and essentially, you're wishing they struggle. Is there a possibility that you could have some dudes on your squad that resent that? Sure, th there could be. But I think guys also are not naive to the point where they don't understand that the NFL is a brutal business. And they also know this. Should Ezekiel Elliott get hurt or his skills start to diminish or in any way, shape, or form he does not return, give them the return on investment as they previously had thought he would, everyone knows that they will ship you down the road in a hurry in a minute and that all that loyalty will go right out the window. So I, whereas it sounds like, you know, people, you know, in the purest form will say, well, that sounds very selfish that you'd be sitting there waiting for your boys to go ahead and lose and hoping that they struggle so you can get yours. Well, unfortunately, that's the way the business goes. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Sometimes you have to avenge. Sometimes you have to just look at yourself and go, look, in this in this business that we're in, in professional football, I have to at some point take care of myself. I can't always or, you know, be looking out for the greater good because sometimes the teams don't look out for my greater good, especially gotcha. if my skills start to diminish or they feel as though I don't give them the same value that I once did. And in his case, especially playing in the position that he does, look, the writing is on the wall, man. It, the writing is on the wall at how people are looking at this position. If you are not, if you are not an elite runner who has a skill set that people feel as though they can't get by committee through a bunch of other younger, cheaper alternatives, if you are not that kind of guy, Look, you, I mean, if you are that kind of guy, you better go ahead and exercise the leverage when you can, as soon as you can. And right now, this is the only way, this is the only choice that he has, especially Understood. with the way he's being used. There's no Understood. way if I'm him, I'm reporting. Understood. I'm by the way, By the way, for the record, I want to say I think you did a better job today making a case for Ezekiel Elliott than you did for the Raiders yesterday. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, 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 Steve, 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 look, way, to, way to redeem yourself. Way I'll to tell redeem you what, look, yourself. You know, there, there's many people who think I'm a Raiders homer, once a Raider, always a Raider. You know I play it straight, right down the middle. <laughs> the Raiders, are, look, the Raiders no, are legit, Stephen. Look, and you're going to see I'm that. Looking, we're going to talk about this all year. I'm looking, I'm looking right at you. I see a fair place team at best. Right at you. Right at you. I, I, I don't know why y'all are drinking all this Chargers Kool-Aid. Why are y'all on the Chargers, the Chargers so hard? Lewis, I'm going to mess with them every chance I get. I'll be watching you and the Raiders together. You know what? Unfortunately, Lewis, we got to go. We got to go. Thank you so much, Lewis Riddick, for joining us. Bye, Lewis. Bye. All right, the college football season is only a day away, so we'll have our expert, Paul Feinbaum, give us the real contenders for the college football playoffs.